Have you been wondering how to lay out a bunch of views in relationship to one another? It's my pleasure to introduce you to Staff Views. You can think of the Staff View as a container that lays out its subviews for you. You tell the Staff View which direction you want to stack the views in, horizontally or vertically, and like magic, you've got a nice clean layout. Take a good look at this example. There are three buttons laid out vertically. All three are the same width, and there's some standard spacing between them. Staff views really shine when building a layout like this. We'll create this layout together and let the staff view do most of the work. Staff views can be extremely powerful, flexible tools, so let's give them a try right now. We've got a reference image here, and we're going to leave it off to the side while we work to remind us what we're trying to do. If you open up the project and look at the storyboard, we're exactly where we left off. We've got a nice piratey backdrop and one button. Let's give this button a better title. I think it should lead to a treasure map. So select the button, open up the Attributes Inspector, and change the title to Treasure Map. There we go. If only you could read it on the actual button. We can make Interface Builder figure out how big the button needs to be by going to the Editor menu and clicking Size to Fit Content. If it's disabled, deselect the button, then reselect it. This is a common bug, so don't fret about it. And that's still not what we want. The background image and text are running together. To fix that, make sure the button is selected, then open the Size Inspector on the right. Set the Content Insets to 15 on the left and right. Now, Size to Fit Content again. This time, use the keyboard shortcut Command Equals. Now the content, the text in this case, is inset 15 points from the left and right edge of the button. But that's only one button, and we know from our image over there that we want three buttons. Pirates do not take kindly to being shortchanged on their buttons. You could drag two more out from the object library, but you already set this one button up with the content inset that we want. So a better idea is to duplicate the button you already have. You can do this with an option click and drag, or with a keyboard shortcut, Command D. And now we've got three buttons, but they all say the same thing. Select one of the buttons and change its title in the Attributes Inspector. This button will show us the weather forecast so we can pack the right pirate clothes for our treasure hunting escapades. And do the same for the other button. That one should give us the privacy policy a must-have for any pirate handbook. These new buttons aren't adjusted for the size of their contents, but we're going to ignore that for the moment and let the stack view fix it for us. There are a couple of ways to create a stack view in Interface Builder. You could select all of the views you want to stack and then click this Embed in Stack View button. But you can also look up a stack view in the object library like you would any other type of view. You should see two options, one horizontal and one vertical stack view. These are exactly the same aside from their axis property, which you can freely reset from the Attributes Inspector. We want a vertical stack view, so drag that onto the view controller. All right, we've got a stack view, and we've got the three buttons we want to be laid out by the stack view. How do we smoosh those things together to get what we want? Select all three buttons and drag them on top of the stack view. That doesn't look like what we expect at all, and if that happens to you, try this Update Frames button. Now, magically, the stack view has already resized the buttons so they're all the same width, and you can read all of their labels. This is thanks to the stack view's default settings and how they interact with intrinsic content size, a subject we'll cover in the next exercise. Stack views won't always work this beautifully out of the box, but as we said, they really shine for layouts like this. Now let's get the stack view placed a little less haphazardly. Select the stack view again, and we've actually got a button selected now. You could select the stack view via the document outline, but there is another thing you can do right from the storyboard editor. If you hold down Shift and then right-click on a view, you can see the entire hierarchy of views below the selected view, including the stack view that we want. Go ahead and select the stack view from that little menu. Now you can drag it into place near the top of the view controller, and then use auto resizing to keep it there using the size inspector. Set the top margin to be fixed, and the left and right margins to be flexible. Go ahead and build and run to see that this is, in fact, working as well as Interface Builder tells us it is. And it's working that well. And this is just the default settings. Let's take a short break to find out more about the properties you can set on stack views. A stack view is a non-rendering view. That means it has no visible elements, not even a background. Its only purpose is to manage the layout of its subviews. Stack views have several properties that control the layout of subviews. The one you've seen already is the axis, which determines if the stack view will arrange its subviews horizontally or vertically. 
There are two more properties that control how subviews are positioned along the direction of the axis, spacing and distribution. For now, you can think of spacing as the minimum space between the views. It can be more complex than this, but this is a solid starting definition. Distribution determines how views are positioned along the axis. In addition to positioning, some distribution options will resize subviews or affect the spacing. Alignment is a property on a stack view that determines how subviews are arranged perpendicular to their axis. For example, should these views be centered vertically or aligned with the top of the stack view? Let's head back to our pirate handbook and find out what these properties are set to by default. Let's see some of those stack view properties in action. Select the stack view again with shift and right click, then open the attributes inspector. Right at the top, you can see the axis of the stack view is vertical. We dragged a vertical stack view in from the object library, so that makes perfect sense. If we had dragged in a horizontal stack view, this would be set to horizontal. But that's not what we're after. We really did want a vertical stack view. The next three properties are still on their default settings. Fill for both alignment and distribution, and spacing is at zero. If we take another look at our example image, we can see that we want some spacing between our buttons. So let's try setting that to eight. Then we can see the stack view has, again, magically added eight points worth of space between all the buttons inside of it. We've got one more trick to show you in this exercise. This isn't the order we want our buttons in. To put them in the right order, you can actually drag items around inside of a stack view and drop them where they should go. As you can see, stack views are very flexible and interface builder friendly. The other stack view properties, alignment and distribution, require a little more information to understand well, so we'll return to them in a future video. Before we go, we wanted to address these warnings you probably got when you ran your project. If you use auto resizing to position your stack views like we currently are, you'll get these ambiguous layout warnings. Basically, Xcode is telling you it doesn't know where your label should be positioned even though they're in a stack view, and that stack view is being positioned with auto resizing options. You can consider this a bug in Xcode and ignore it for now. Next up, a challenge.